So this is section 2.7, which is solving equations in one variable. We are going to learn about solving rational equations, extraneous solutions, and then applications. So an extraneous solution is basically when you're solving the equation and you get your solutions and you plug them back into the original equation. If it does not work in the original equation, we call it an extraneous solution. So yes, you solved and found it, but it doesn't work if you plug it back into the original. So here's our first example. We're going to solve a rational equation. So we have x plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 1. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get a common denominator for everything. So that means I'm going to turn both of these into fractions and put them over 1. And then I look at the denominators and I see we have 1 and x minus 3. So that means our common denominator is x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by x minus 3 on the top and bottom. The second fraction doesn't need anything because it already has an x minus 3. And then this needs an x minus 3 on the top and bottom. So with rational functions, when we get the denominators all the same, so we get a common denominator for all of the different parts, you can just cross it off and we can solve the numerator. So now I'm going to distribute the x here, so that gives me x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals x minus 3. Now I'm going to get everything onto the same side since it's a quadratic. So this would be x squared. If I subtract the x over here, it's going to be minus 4x. And then if I add 3, it's going to be plus 4. So I can factor this. I say what multiplies to positive 4 and adds to negative 4. That would be x minus 2 and x minus 2. So that means my solution is 2. Before I put a box around it and say that's my answer, I want to check to make sure it's not extraneous. So what that means, if I go back up here into my original equation and I plug in 2 for x, does it cause a problem? So does it mean that I end up dividing by 0? No. Does it mean that there's a negative underneath the square root sign? No. So therefore it works. And then I can put a box around it and say that is my solution. Okay, so this next one, we are going to do the same process. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to factor a quadratic here. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 3. So what multiplies to 3 and adds to negative 4, that would be x minus 1 and x minus 3. So if we look over here, so our common denominator for all three of these um, fractions would be x minus 1 times x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply both fractions by the piece that it's missing. So this one's missing the x minus 1. Sorry, I ran out of space. This one's missing the x minus 3. Okay, so now at this point, we have all three parts of our, so all three fractions in our equation have the same denominator. So I can go ahead and cross it off. And then I'm going to, so 1 distributed doesn't change anything, so this would be x minus 1 plus, I'm going to distribute the 2x, so this would become 2x squared minus 6x equals 2, because we didn't have to multiply that side of the equation by anything because it had both parts of the common denominator. Now I'm going to get everything on to the left-hand side here, so this would be 2x squared, and then I'd have minus 5x. And I'm going to subtract the 2, so it would be minus 3 equals 0. This is a quadratic with a lead coefficient greater than 1, so I need to factor it that long way. So this would be what multiplies to negative 6 and adds to negative 5. It would be negative 6 and 1. So this would be 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x, or just x, minus 3. Then I group the first two terms and the last two terms. I can take out a 2x and get x minus 3. I can take out a 1 and get x minus 3. So my factors are 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. 
which means my solutions, so if I set each parenthesis equal to zero and solve, I would get negative one half and positive three. Now again, before we say this is my final answer, I need to go back to the original equation and figure out if I plug in a negative one half or a three, is it gonna cause a problem? So if I look at all the x values, if I plug in a negative one half, not a problem. If I plug in a three right here, that's gonna cause me to divide by zero. So that means that three is extraneous and our only solution to this problem is negative one half. Okay, our last example here is finding a minimum perimeter. So this is an application problem. It says to find the dimensions of the rectangle with minimum perimeter if its area is 300 square meters. Find the least perimeter. So we remember that perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width, and area is length times width. So we're gonna say that x is the width. So that means that if we use this 300 here, so we can say that 300 is equal to length times x. So our length would be equal to 300 divided by x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this in for the length right here, and we're going to use x instead of w for our width. So that means for our perimeter, we have 2 times 300 over x plus, oops, plus 2x. So now we can simplify this if we want and write it as 600 over x plus 2x, but now we're going to graph this. So graphing is a good way to find minimums and maximums. So when you graph this, you're going to get a graph that looks like this. And if you can't see this, like if you're graphing it in Desmos, um, zoom way out and then you will be able to see it. So it kind of looks like a parabola that's slanted a little bit. So we want to find that minimum value right there. So the minimum value occurs at 17.32 and 69.28. Okay, so we're trying to find the width, we want the dimensions of the rectangle that would make the perimeter um, a minimum. Okay, so this is our x value that we found, the 17.32, and then we wanna find what the length would be. So we know that the area equals length times width, so 300, equals um, 17.32 times our length. So we can divide both sides by 17.32. And we get actually 17.32. So that means our dimensions are 17.32 by 17.32. And if, it, if you're trying to find the minimum perimeter, so what that perimeter would be, that would be this y value of your graph right there. Okay, let me know if there are any questions.